It's been a quiet week here in Lakeville, the town where nothing really ever happens. But a lot was really happening in Lakeville this year. A lot of things that never happened before. Wildfires up in Canada sent a fog here. It smelled bad and lasted for months. We couldn't even see the great summer sunsets. I'm sure the sun continued to set across the lake near the Salvation Army, as it did in past summers. But that has to be a matter of faith. To make up for it, though, summer continued much longer than usual. We had sunny days and blue skies all the way through October and November, possibly thanks to an El Nino, or global warming, or maybe God. That was a good thing, because there was so much happening here in Lakeville this year that the nice fall weather helped along. A lot of construction, a lot of changes. Tish and Mark, a few doors east, tore down their garage after renovating their entire house and began construction of a big new garage. Tony and Corrine on the north side of us started a huge renovation on their old cabin, and they rented the Shram's house on the other side of us for the winter. Houses all around the lake were being torn down and bigger ones going up. Mark Maletsky on the North Shore said it was as though Lakeville was being gentrified. Louis sold Louis' food and spirits in the spring, and Mike, who owns the Oxford Tavern, bought it. He changed the name to the Lakeville Station, which was nice. Makes it easy for out-of-towners to know where to find it. Helicopter Chet bought the old bait shop, he bought it because some entrepreneurs were planning to turn it into a jet ski rental. Ched said at the time he didn't know what he was going to do with it. All summer long, as the foundation was laid and the walls were being erected, it was taking on a new shape. We all struggled to figure out what it was. I imagine people around Stonehenge enjoyed the same sense of wonder as those rocks were being stood up. But we weren't worried. We know that anything would be better than a jet ski rental. The extended summer and the elongated fall certainly helped a lot of things catch up. The sun seemed to shine nearly every day in October and November, but it had a disturbing, unexpected consequence. Conversation in Lakeville at that time of the year usually centered around complaining about bad weather and cloudy skies and the need to get our boats out of the water before the lake freezes. With so many warm, sunny days, people were struggling for conversational launching points. Subjects we didn't care about took center stage, but they didn't seem to open the floodgates of discourse the way bad weather observations did. Things like two-cycle versus four-cycle motors, live bait versus plastic worms, or why the Elks Club served pulled pork one fish fry Friday. They just weren't the catalytic talk starters that bad weather used to be. But some things in, in Lakeville did stay the same. Mike, the new owner of Louie's, continued the tradition of five-hour happy hours at the Lakeville station, and Mike hired Pat as his chief cook. Joyce and I knew Pat as the waitress hostess at the Celtic Inn, the other Lakeville restaurant. We had dinner there often. Joyce liked the chicken marsala and sometimes shepherd's pie. When, when we arrived, even before we sat down, Pat would bring us two glasses of Joyce's favorite wine and greet us with a smile. I don't know Pat's last name or anything about her, but knowing she is still here is a comfort. Some things just do not need to change. Well, that's the news from Lakeville, where all the men are handy, all the women are witty, and most of the children grew up and moved away. pretty little town When nothing really ever happens I wish I could go